Hey, welcome to blog number seven, our final blog for 2020. Today we're talking about the shadow of the leader. What shadow do you cost? We don't realize how much impact our actions have sometimes. People are watching our children, family members, direct reports, supervisors, and others, not in a paranoid way, just saying that our actions speak. If you say you have an open door, yet you're always busy, the door's physically closed, or you greet those that enter with, what? Your door's truly not open. As leaders, we cast a shadow. Think about our shadow outside. It's behind us. So what shadow do you cause? What do you leave behind when you leave an interaction with someone? In this case, with an employee, for instance. What shadow have we left behind when we leave an interaction? What do we want people to say or feel about encounters with us as leaders? If we're always rushed, literal, always checking our messages on our phones, we may leave the interaction with our employees feeling like they didn't get to talk about all of their concerns. They may not feel their ideas were heard or considered, and thus trust is either broken or certainly not built. If our goal is to ensure that no one bothers us often, then we definitely take actions that will make that happen. If we want our employees, family members, and others to feel comfortable talking to us about anything, anytime, we project an openness and encouragement. We listen, we question, we paraphrase, and we listen more. We do maybe 20 to 30% of the talking. Then when we walk away, we've cast a shadow that says, my coach cares about me and understands my concerns. I trust him or her to listen and take action. I trust them more now, so I'll share more information next time. Remember, as leaders, if our faucet of information is frozen or broken, we miss out on the honesty and transparency of our team members. We may miss out on key facts that can make things better for them and for the company and for the team. We hear what they think we want or need to hear, not what is really important or needed so that we can provide the best possible information. So keep that faucet open so we are trusted and build that trust and we can hear what we need to hear. So before your interactions, before your next interaction, begin with the end in mind, a Covey principle. Ask what shadow do I cast and what shadow do I want to cast? Work with a coach if there's a gap between your actual shadow and your desired shadow. I worked many years in the food industry as district manager, region manager, restaurant manager, all different levels, and worked with all kinds of great people. It's an exciting place to be. One of the things we talked about early on was what shadow we wanted to cast as a leader. If I go into a restaurant and all I do is have a checklist of everything that's wrong, what I'm checking for, this is wrong, do very little listening and just do a lot of telling. How interested is that manager I'm talking to going to be in seeing me next time? What are they going to do to prepare for my visit next time? Are they going to look forward to the interaction? Are they going to come to it sharing? Or are they going to cower and wonder what list I'm going to give them now? So if there's a gap between the shadow you're casting and the one you want to cast, work with a coach. Here's a great example of self-awareness and transparency can play a big role in your development as a leader. We talked about those in our EQ blog. So our shadow is what we leave behind, our reactions, the perceptions, any learning when we leave an interaction. Do we leave a shadow of hope and growth so they look forward to the next time we meet? Or do we nitpick and find only what's wrong so they dread seeing us again? That also sets the stage for our next meeting. Think about it. So listen up over the next few weeks as we replay our first seven blogs before we return with all new topics for Bring Your Best Self in 2021.